work is over for the day and it's time to relax. Most of the Cuban exiles in Miami's Little Havana district fled when the communists took over in 1959. But their love of Cuban music and culture remains strong, as does their interest in events back home. Many have their doubts about the possible restoration of diplomatic relations between Washington and Havana. The Cuban government is very bad, controlling and controlling and again controlling. And the embassy is not be changed. Will a new relationship between Washington and Havana really make much difference to the people of Cuba? Again, there's skepticism. Some of Miami's Cuban exiles say President Obama has betrayed them. Obama will have something for his legacy and the Cuban people will still have slavery. All I see is one failing president and a dictator having a conversation. Until my people are free, can eat, can actually speak freely and live, I see nothing happening. But not everyone sees it that way. Opinion polls of the two million Cuban exiles in the U.S. suggest that support for President Obama's policy is growing. Nelia Santa Marina owns a cafe in Miami and regularly visits relatives in Cuba. She has advice for people who oppose restoring diplomatic relations. Get on a plane, go to the island, talk to the Cuban people, and then come back with empirical information, with the right information to decide the fate of, of, a, of a country that you've not visited in 50 years. Before the communist revolution, two and a half million people a year traveled between the U.S. and Cuba, mostly by sea. Entrepreneurs see investment potential if restrictions are lifted. Some businessmen have invested in ferries, hoping to start services as early as this summer. Brian Hall invested in a high-speed boat, the fulfillment of a childhood dream. It's funny, my grandmother, she used to vacation in Cuba with her family. And uh, she used to show us pictures and she used to talk about how wonderful Cuba was. And as a kid, I always wanted to go to Cuba and, and like what my grandmother did. And, and because of the embargo and, and everything else. Paul's Cuba Cat service will offer a three-hour journey for $170. He says it's a money spinner, an exciting turn of events after a lifetime of building boats. The Cuba opening up for Americans is a lot like the, the Berlin Wall falling. Um, it's our, here in North America. And what we see is um, Cuba Cats will be able to be the bridge to bring the families from Cuba to the families here in the U.S. They haven't been together in over 55 years. They're going to be able to come together, and it's a very exciting time. Paul can only hope that the thaw between Washington and Havana continues.